Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I do a comprehensive set of scientific tests on the Amazfit GTR2. First, I'll test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. And second, I'll test the heart rate measurements. To give you the main conclusion up front, the Amazfit GTR2 is the first smartwatch I've ever returned because of the poor quality of the measurements. On my channel, I've tested many different smartwatches, from relatively high-end watches like the Apple Watch to more budget-friendly watches like the Mi Band 5. I can only wear one or two of them on a daily basis, but I never return any of them after I finish testing, since if a company sells me a quality product, it doesn't feel right to return it. However, the Amazfit GTR2 turned out to be the worst smartwatch I've ever tested so far. And in this video, I will show you why that is using scientific tests. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Before getting to the test, I would like to provide the most important background information on the Amazfit GTR2. The Amazfit GTR2 comes with the BioTracker 2 sensor. This sensor is used to measure your heart rate and oxygen saturation of your blood. The watch also comes with an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a 3-axis geomagnetic sensor and a barometric sensor. The watch also comes with built-in GPS and GLONASS support so that you can track your runs without having to carry your smartphone with you. When it comes to the looks, I must admit that the GTR2 is one of the most beautiful smartwatches I've seen. Unfortunately, the smart sensors of this watch did not perform well for me, so I cannot recommend it. Let's get to the test where I'll explain why this is. I want to start off with the sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I wore the GT2R to bed for three nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device for scientific studies, I'll link it below. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I had to manually copy the sleep stages from the Zap app in order to analyze it. I did enable the sleep assistant feature in the Zap app which is supposed to give more accurate sleep information to the GTR2. In the end, this setting basically adds REM sleep tracking to the sleep tracking of the GTR2. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the GT2R correctly predicts the moments I'm awake. Now, to the results I obtained. Let's first have a look at the accuracy over the three individual nights, after which I will do a statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. And as you can see, I went to bed around midnight. On the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the same order that they're usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the GTR2. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see only a partial overlap between the GTR2 and the EEG device. Both of the deep sleep segments I had during this night were detected, however they were only partially detected and later in the night much more deep sleep that was not there was detected. Looking at REM sleep, which I marked here in red, we also see only partial detection. Three out of the six REM sleep segments seem to be detected. However, this also means that half of them are missed. Additionally, some extra REM sleep was detected when in reality I had light sleep during these moments. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep, together called non-REM, and always end in REM. Based on just the data from the GTR2, I would say it's really difficult to detect any of the sleep cycles. There's just too much REM sleep missing. The moments I was awake are marked here in green. As you can see, awake time was roughly correctly detected. There was a slight shift, but otherwise this is good. Sleep start and sleep end are marked here in yellow-brown. 
As you can see, this was also roughly correctly detected. Again, there was a slight shift, so it might be that the timekeeping overall was shifted by a minute or two. Overall though, awake time and sleep start and sleep end detection were mostly correct. Here we have the second night of sleep tracking. If we first look at deep sleep, we again see only a partial match. The two deep sleep segments were mostly detected, however a lot of extra deep sleep that was not really there was also detected. REM sleep detection for this night is again pretty bad. Out of the five segments, two are sort of detected, but mostly the REM sleep that the GTR2 detects seems random to me. This also means that we can basically not see any of the sleep cycles for this night if we were to just base it on the data from the GTR2. Again, awake detection is pretty good as you can see here. And the same goes for sleep start and sleep end detection, which is pretty good. Again, both of these are slightly shifted, so it might really be a slight difference in timekeeping, though this will not influence our overall conclusions. And here we have the final night. And what you will notice first is that at the beginning of this graph, the GTR2 thinks I already fell asleep around 8 p.m., by which time I was actually still fully awake. First says I had some light sleep, later followed by some deep sleep, after which I was awake again for a bit. Likely I was working on the computer or something during this time, so it's surprising that it detected me as being asleep. Let's ignore this part for the rest of the analysis, but this really was a big mistake. If we remove that part, we get this graph. And as you can see, deep sleep detection was really bad for this night. Almost none of the actual deep sleep was detected, and it detected a lot of deep sleep that was not really there. If we look at REM sleep, this is also really bad. It seems that about one third of this night was detected as REM sleep by the GTR2. And the REM sleep that was really there is only partially detected. Again, awake detection was mostly correct, though it did miss the first time I woke up. Based on these results, I would say that the GTR2 is decent at detecting when you fall asleep at night and when you wake up in the morning. However, it did really mess up one night where it detected me falling asleep about four hours before actually going to bed, though this might be a fluke. Additionally, it detects awakenings during the night quite well. However, it appears to be pretty bad at detecting the sleep stages. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the GTR2 and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's take a look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device and the GTR2 predicted. Here I display those percentages for the EEG device on the left and the GTR2 on the right. However, the one night where the GTR2 predicted me falling asleep early really messes with these percentages. So let's get rid of that part of the night. If we do that, we get these percentages. Here we see that over all three nights, the total amount of each of the sleep stages do match pretty well. However, based on the individual nights, I get the impression that this is more luck than anything else. For instance, we saw for one night that there was a great excess of REM sleep, and another night there was way too little REM sleep. And these two then compensate for each other. More important even than these total percentages is checking if the GTR2 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. That's what I displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left, the sleep stages according to the GTR2. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the GTR2. First of all, we see that 38% of what was actually deep sleep was also predicted as being deep sleep. However, a large part of deep sleep was actually predicted as light sleep by the GTR2. If we look at light sleep, we see that most of this was detected correctly, about 70.6%. When it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. Next, looking at REM sleep, this was really bad. Only about 27% of what was actually REM sleep was also detected as REM sleep. Most of it was actually detected as being light sleep. Finally, awake time is a bit deceiving here, since again this includes the extra segment of sleep that the GTR2 detected. This leads to a large part of awake time being detected as light sleep. Let's get rid of that segment. If we recalculate and do that, we see that only about half the awake time was detected correctly. However, as we saw in the individual nights, there was potentially a slight shift in the timekeeping that might influence these results. To quickly put this into context, let's compare the results of the GTR2 side by side with that of two other trackers, the Huawei GT2 Pro and the Fitbit Inspire 2. 
Here on the left again, we have the results for the GTR2 and on the right, the results for the Huawei GT2 Pro. And as you can see, the results are actually somewhat comparable. They're both not that good at deep sleep detection, not that good at REM sleep detection, awake detection is quite okay, and light sleep detection is also quite okay for both. So both of these are not that great at sleep stage detection. Next, let's take a look at one of the best sleep trackers I've tested recently, the Fitbit Inspire 2. And as you can see, this does much better at sleep stage tracking than the GTR2. All of the sleep stages are tracked with an accuracy of 64% or higher. And this is not something that the GTR2 can compete with. The heart rate tracking of the GTR2 is probably mostly used during exercise. However, your heart rate during the night might be used by the sleep detection algorithm. The question is, how accurate is the heart rate detection of the GTR2? To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the GTR2 and the Polar H10 chest strap for 9 spinning sessions and 5 weightlifting sessions. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's have a look at those results. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate measurements. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the GTR2. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the GTR2. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the GTR2 is half that of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure about half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, there's really bad agreement between the GTR2 and the ECG device. Most points are not along the blue line, and especially in the higher heart rate range, the GTR2 performs really bad. Most of the time, it measures less than half of the actual heart rate. Here in the medium heart rate ranges, there are a few good measurements, but still, most measurements are below the blue line. Let's have a look at the individual training sessions to see if we can find out what is the underlying cause. Here you see the first spinning workout. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the GTR2. As you can see, I took four short breaks in the spinning session where my heart rate would dip. Overall, the agreement here is really bad. The GTR2 did not accurately pick up on any of the increases in heart rate during the training. It basically measured some of the base heart rate, but never actually detected the proper increase. Here we have the second spinning session and we basically see the same thing. And the same is true for most spinning workouts. It basically never accurately detects the increases in heart rate. As you can also see here, in this spinning session it did a tiny bit better, but overall this is pretty bad. Now I won't show all sessions because this pattern basically repeats over all spinning workouts. Next, let's take a look at some weightlifting sessions. This is something most smartwatches struggle with, because during weightlifting I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrists, and this makes it difficult for the watch to accurately detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. However, the GTR2 does even worse than most other wearables, as you can also see here. It basically picked up on none of the increases in my heart rate, and most of the time it detects a way too low heart rate. That's also what you see here during this session, also here during weightlifting, and finally also for this weightlifting session and this weightlifting session. So, how does this compare to other wearables I've tested? To put these results into context, I'll briefly show you the results for four other devices. Here are the results for some other watches. The Huawei Watch GT2 Pro on the left and the Apple Watch Series 6 on the right. Now the Apple Watch is by far the best watch I've tested when it comes to heart rate measurements, as I showed you in my video last week. However, as you can see, the GT2 Pro also did a decent job since most measurements are along the blue line. Here are two more watches. The Huawei Watch Fit on the left and the Polar Vantage M on the right. As you can see, both did a pretty decent job as well with most measurements along the blue line. Just to remind you, these are the results for the Amazfit GTR2. And as you can see, these results are definitely worse than anything else I just showed you. As I showed, both the sleep tracking and the heart rate tracking of the Amazfit GTR2 are pretty bad. The sleep tracking does appear to be able to pick up on the moment you wake up during the night. 
Also sleep start and sleep end detection might be okay. Though for one out of the three nights I tested this, this had a major problem. The sleep stage detection was really bad. So I would not trust the GT2R for this. Also the heart rate accuracy is the worst I've seen in any wearable device so far. I am wondering if I got a bad unit or if this is an inherent problem with the design of the GTR2. If other units have better heart rate tracking, this might also mean that the sleep tracking is better in these devices, since the sleep tracking might rely on heart rate measurements. Honestly, it is really sad since the Amazfit GTR2 is one of the most beautiful smartwatches I've seen so far. For now, I cannot recommend buying the Amazfit GTR2. But as I showed you last week, if your focus is on heart rate tracking, then you should buy an Apple Watch Series 6. If you want good sleep tracking, I would recommend a Fitbit device like the Fitbit Charge 4 or the Fitbit Inspire 2. I'm currently testing the Honor Bands 5 and 6, the Amazfit Band 5, and I just ordered the Mi Band 6. So it will be interesting to see how these compare. Check out my Instagram if you want to see what other devices I'm testing. I should mention some of the limitations of the data and tests I showed here. First, I just tested a single device and I just tested it on me. Maybe a different unit would work better. Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the GTR2 against a full scientific polysomnography setup. I actually built my own polysomnography device using OpenBCI components and we assembled it two weeks ago. This way, I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of Corona. A big shout out to my colleague Rob for the 3D printing and putting it together, and my colleague Freddy for his software and hardware expertise. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit, and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want, check out some of my other videos.